Hey YouTube, today I wanted to talk about solar power. So when I first started out, I did a solar video basically on how to connect a simple solar system. I'll leave a link to that uh, here. You guys can check that out. Uh, but today I wanted to talk a lot more about the specifics of how we wired up for the cabin. So I wanted to share with you some of the successes and some of the things that weren't so successful. And then maybe this will help you build your own solar system. So we have two banks of panels. Each bank of panels consists of four 100 watt panels connected in series. And then the two banks of panels are connected together in parallel and tied back into the system. When I first started uh, researching and trying to understand the best way to connect my panels, it was a real struggle. There's a lot of back and forth online about the best way to do it. Uh, when I initially set up, I only had four panels running. Uh, so I connected everything in parallel because it seemed to make sense to me uh, and that was fine but when I connected the second panel bank uh, it was way too much current coming in and I would just blow the fuse. A little bit more research showed me that most of people do this so they'll connect uh, positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative having that flow in series and then connect their two panel banks back to the charge controller in parallel. Uh, that brings me in around 75, 76 volts and decent charge into my system. So one of the things I didn't want to have was all the solar components inside the cabin. They take up a fair amount of room. By the time you get battery bank in there, you get your charge controller, all that stuff has to get mounted onto the wall. So what we decided to do was to mount everything outside in a deck box. So if you look at the wires here on the ground, these are the wires from the solar panels running back into here. And then everything flows out of the box through this piece of conduit into the cabin. So if we open up the deck box, we find the basic electrical system that feeds into the cabin. On the left side, we have the battery housing. Uh, eventually, this section will be insulated uh, and heated to keep that warm. Uh, I have two batteries now. I have a CanBat cold start battery, which is good in temperatures up to about minus 20, I think. And I have this Renergy battery, uh, which is only good down to, I think, around the zero mark. The plan is to uh, feed an AC cable in here and I have a heating pad that it will sit on that will actually wrap the whole battery and hopefully keep it warm enough when it gets cooler. Uh, this battery actually has a self shutdown mode that it won't actually damage itself. Uh, a little messy right now on this side, but that is the goal for the left side. On the right side is where we basically have all our components. The charge controller basically takes the solar energy and converts it into power that will save in your battery bank. Uh, so those two larger wires coming off the bottom feed back to the battery bank. And that's basically how you turn your solar energy into DC uh, power. From that battery bank, you feed a few different spots. The first is a DC block. This is a DC block that you would typically find on a boat or an RV. You can see it's got spot for, I think, 10 circuits. I'm only using three of them right now. Basically what this does is this will power all the DC uh, things in the cabin. Uh, we run our fans, our chargers, and our lights all run on DC so far. Also from the battery, we run to our 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This little baby takes DC energy and turns it into AC energy. Uh, and then it will feed into the cabin on regular uh, 14.2 Romex, which is what you would have wired into your house. You can see it on this end going into the feed that runs into the house. Also important to note, guys, that I know it's looking a little bit messy in that box right now. Uh, the plan is to have a, obviously uh, shorten up all the wires, get everything pinned up on the on the backboard uh, properly so that it all looks nice and neat and tidy. Right now it's a little bit messy. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll have enough time that I can get the insulation in the battery compartment and that will make a huge difference in the overall performance of the system. So the real cool thing about Renergy is it also comes with an app. So this app allows you to monitor what's going on with your battery system. Uh, it looks at a bunch of different things and it really helps me to understand sort of where my batteries are. And the battery itself uh, can be monitored, uh, and this is just through a Bluetooth that's connected to the battery. You can see here it gives you all the specific information on your battery bank, uh, what the temperature is, what your voltage is, what your max voltage is, uh, where you are with regards to your charge. Again, just makes it super simple to understand where you are uh, with your batteries. Also important to note, I selected this deck box for a very specific reason. We have a similar model on our back deck at home and we use it to keep our 
patio furniture, cushions and things like that. Completely watertight. Unbelievable. Got this one at Costco. It was like a couple hundred bucks. Uh, it's great. And it's lockable. It's got a lock on it. Uh, everything in there stays beautifully dry and it's real easy to drill your holes through. Worked out perfectly. So we've wired the cabin with both alternating current and direct current, AC and DC. The reason we do that is the same reason they do it on boats and trailers and things like that. You want to run whatever you can on DC because your battery is DC and you don't have to waste power running it through an inverter and AC circuitry generally just pulls more current. As an example, my DC pot lights each pulls about a quarter of an amp where the AC alternative would probably be close to an amp. So it's about a quarter as much power drawn by those lights. So the question is, what do you run on AC and what do you run on DC? So all those pot lights you see hanging down there, they are the first part of the DC circuit. As I mentioned before, uh, they pull just a fraction of what the equivalent in AC lighting pulls. We have eight of them in the cabin. Uh, they go the whole length all the way down to the end. Haven't even put them in yet. I'm just waiting to have the proper ceiling put in. And those light up the cabin beautifully. We also run our chargers on DC. Uh, you can see these chargers here. They're super inexpensive. I bought them on Amazon for about 30 bucks each. Uh, the only problem with this one is it's set up right beside the bed and it glows blue. So we have to cover it up at night or it's like having a gigantic blue nightlight on. But it does a really good job of charging uh, our cell phones. And again, pulls substantially less current than charging them on the AC equivalent. We also run our fans on DC power. Uh, they all have their individual outlets and this style of plug, which basically plugs in like that. These fans, again, uh, were bought on Amazon. They were about 30 bucks each. We have two of them and they oscillate. And when you're laying in bed in the hot summer, it's nice to have a nice, cool fan blowing on you. Uh, the fan we brought from home originally was a gigantic fan and it just pulled way too much power for our battery bank. So we have two of these running on DC as well. Uh, on our AC circuitry, we run a television. Now we don't really have a satellite or cable or anything like that. What we do have is the ability to watch movies. So we'll bring movies from home and watch those. Uh, that is the first part of our AC circuit. And we also run a small bar fridge uh, on AC circuitry. Oh, you can see uh, with it being small, you really load it up. <laughs> That's feeding three people. We've been here for five days now, so uh, it was a lot more stuffed when we got here, but that is probably the most important part of our AC circuit. It really helps us from having to get ice and things like that in the summer. And of course, this little beauty, the coffee machine, it runs on 120 as well. Uh, we do have a French press that we can use, but this is just so much more convenient and it makes the coffee within a few minutes. It's a lot less work. That does pull a lot of power though for a little coffee machine. So this right here looks like an everyday outdoor receptacle, but it's not. What I use this for is to bring power into the cabin when I don't have enough power in the batteries. Uh, I've run this receptacle and it runs into the kitchen uh, where it ties into another receptacle. That way I can set the generator right here, start the generator and run power in from the generator. Of course, the main problem with running the generator is that it's super loud. You don't want to listen to this all day, trust me. So the real cool thing about this little guy is that when I'm not using it as a means to bring power into the cabin, I can run an extension cord from one of the plugs inside to the plug that ties to this, and I can actually use it to bring power out of the cabin. The only uh, trick there is you cannot have two power sources feed into the same thing at the same time, or And that's all for today, guys. I'll post a link around the screen here to some of our other videos. Uh, if you enjoyed watching this, please hit that like button and subscribe. It just helps us to grow the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.